Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. Beautiful city of San Francisco, California. A sun splash Sunday afternoon on this Mother's Day and the fight against breast cancer all around Major League Baseball. The color pink is everywhere as it should be and it's a final game of this four game series Reds needing a win to get out of here with a split taking on the Giants. And hi again everybody alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day I'm Tom Brenneman happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there you're looking good there with that pink bat. Thank you I appreciate that uh, you know Major League Baseball has these pink bats all around you know to commemorate Mother's Day to remind people the fight against breast cancer mm -hmm. and they are all in and I hope everyone else is too happy Mother's uh, Day to everybody out there it's just a, it's a wonderful day there's a lot of grins around here uh, the first two games of this series have been gone the way of the San Francisco Giants all the moms that have come to the ball park here are happy well the Reds have something to say about that maybe today well we'll see if their offense can get it going because really they have pitched beautifully in this series it's just been the last couple of games they are getting plenty of hits and guys on base but not the big hit well you know the Reds scored 17 runs in two games against the Giants when they were back in Cincinnati and so you get used to thinking well this team is really growing on offense and they're going to score a lot of runs every day but this is the way a game of baseball goes one day you score a bunch the next couple of days you don't score any at all and in this ballpark that can happen quite often. Low scoring games are more common than not. On the mound today, he's throwing the ball quite well by and large for the Reds again this year is Tim Adelman. Gives up a lot of home runs, though Adelman does, and uh, he's a guy that in this ballpark that may not be too uh, really too bad for him. His out pitch is a changeup, and I think that the uh, what he's been able to do this year is been able to mix up his breaking pitches and his changeups and really pitch pretty good baseball overall. Uh, he's a guy that uh, you don't know how long he's going to be in the rotation, so he's got a little personal pressure on him. All right, when we come back. Jim Day's going to check in with some of the Reds players about their favorite meal cooked by mom growing up. Stick around for this. San Francisco. I'm the son of Patricia Jim Day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Billy Hamilton with that strained calf missed yesterday's game passed all the protocol today. He's back in the starting lineup. On this Mother's Day throughout the game we're going to find out from some of the players their favorite mom cooked meal. Here's Billy. 
my favorite is fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, co uh, sweet cornbread. Can't forget the, uh, I guess you got some yams on the side every now and then, and you get the uh, little the little dirty rice, the little dirty rice that she makes. And um, you can't just, can't can't end it with that, without the Kool-Aid. You gotta have the syrupy Kool-Aid. I mean, my mom, she's one of those ladies that, she, when she comes in, she brings me a big pitcher of Kool-Aid, which I'm telling you, like, we go through a whole bag of sugar and one, one pack of Kool-Aid, but at the end, it's worth it. But like, yeah, she gotta have the Kool-Aid. Gotta have a Kool-Aid. Billy's in the on-deck circle, and he doesn't need any sugar. He's already got enough energy. Hopefully he has energy at the top of the lineup today, Tom Brenneman. Well, you're not lying about that, Jim Day. After missing yesterday, it's nice to have Hamilton back in there after that injury occurred to his cab. As you look at the red starting lineup presented by Menards, you know, we were speculating up here, and thankfully uh, I was incorrect thinking it was that uh, oblique muscle again that ended his season the opening week of September last year. It was a tender calf, but back in there today. Followed by Jeanette and Votto is Billy. Then Duval, Suarez, and Shebler. A latter third of Peraza playing short again for Zach Kozart today. Mezzarocco and then Adelman. Veteran right-hander Jeff Samarja, winless so far in the year for the Giants. Well, if you look at all the peripheral numbers on Jeff Samarja, you wonder how in the heck has this guy not won any ball games? I mean, the earned run average is bad, but everything else is good. Lots of strikeouts, not all that many walks. He keeps the ball in the ballpark. He's a very athletic pitcher, as you probably know. He'll throw in the mid-90s with a lot of run on that fastball. Ball one to Hamilton. This one underway. The final game of this four-game series. That one dribbled foul. A ball and a strike. The Reds won the opener in a one-run decision here on Thursday night. Lost the 17-inning marathon by a run on Friday night. And then a tight one yesterday, a 3-1 Giants win. Reds come in overall on the season, 19 up, 17 down. They're a game and a half behind the front-running Cardinals, who are beating Chicago. That game now in the seventh inning at St. Louis. Cardinals 4-0 over the Cubs so far. Milwaukee leapfrogged the Reds for second place in the NL Central with a win last night. Brewers are getting blasted by the Mets seven to one in the sixth inning today. Two and two on Billy Hamilton. For Samarja, a two sports star collegiately at Notre Dame. One of the great receivers in all of college football during his run there. The quarterback, of course, Brady Quinn, the Columbus, Ohio native. Samarja grew up in northern Indiana and there's strike three called a breaking ball to Hamilton. Now that breaking ball that Samarja throws was a pitch that he threw about three or four years ago, and he broke it back out again last year when he was here with the Giants for the first time. Takes a little bit off the slider. It's more like a curveball, a perfect location there. Starts off the plate and then comes right back and catches the outside corner. Scooter Jeanette getting a start at second base today. We mentioned Cozart off again. He played all 17 innings here on Friday night. Has not played since. Scooter at 299. Three home runs and 15 batted in. Showed you those numbers a moment ago. I mean, these last two games, the Reds have collected 19 base hits. Not a lot of rockets in those 19 base hits. They've had some flares all over the field, broken bat singles, some rollers, etc. But 0 for 18 with runners in scoring position in each of the last two games. Well, remember, 19 hits, though, covers 28 innings. Well put. Yesterday, they missed so many chances early in the game. Red stranded eight runners in the first four innings, seven in the first three innings. Yeah, and you know, Tom, when your offense begins to sputter a little bit, that's when you have to make it up in other ways, and that would be... You know, smart base running would be one way. Taking advantage of what the other team gives you is a way to do that. They had a nice start from Bonilla yesterday. Lisa Verto enjoying the day after a good start. Even though he was hung with a loss, he must feel pretty good about the way he went after it. But you've got to make up for the things that you're not doing offensively with every little thing you possibly can. Because these low-scoring games out here in San Francisco, where they can be decided by the weirdest and smallest little thing. 
Three and two to count on Jeanette, and here comes some margin. And it's strike three, foul tipped into the mid of Posey. We look at the defense behind Samarja, presented by Ford. Span again in center, just returned from a disabled list. Posey had the day off yesterday after catching 17 frames on Friday night. Christian Arroyo was actually injured in the postgame celebration on Friday night in the 17th inning after that home run by the Giants catcher. Votto. Hammers one down the right field line up against the wall, and Joey with a two-out double here in the Reds' first inning. Hammers a breaking ball. I think it was probably a changeup. It was one of those split-finger pitches that he uses as a changeup and just gets it up, and Votto is all over it. Everybody's been involved in not being able to get that big hit the last couple of games, but the heart of the order has been really quiet. Duval two for 12 so far in the series. Suarez is two for 14, is not knocked in a run. Neither is Duval for that matter. Strike one. Well, they're going to have their hands full with some margin. And you look at a guy's win-loss record, you automatically think, oh, well, you know, 0-5, earned run average, you know, almost five and a half runs per game. But his last two starts, 20 strikeouts, no walks. And that covers 15 innings. So he may be turning it around from a personal standpoint. Third second, two away in the opening inning. Nothing and one on Duvall, and that one is down the left field line and foul. Well, run support sometimes dictates whether you win or lose ball games. You can pitch well and lose, and you can pitch well and get a no decision. Smarja this year is averaging the second worst run support of anybody out there, just this side of Garrett Cole. He also has not had a whole lot of great defense behind him. One thing the Reds pitchers are able to enjoy on a daily basis, the best defensive team in the league. Oh, and two on Duvall. And the inning is over. Samarja fans three, allows a two-out double to Votto. Tim Adelman gets the ball when we come back. to today the opening inning for the Giants their first 35 games this year they hit a total of two first inning home runs well in the first three games of this series they've had a home run in each of the first innings Brandon Belt twice Denard Span once 
We'll see if Tim Edelman can change that tune. Giants starting lineup presented by Menards. It'll be Span, Panic, and then Belt. Posey back in the lineup. Crawford at shortstop. Arroyo back in there at third. Nunez, Ruggiano, who homered yesterday, and some Marge on the mound. Tim Adelman, outside of one start against St. Louis, has been pretty good. He's allowed two, two, and three. Not pitching necessarily deep into games, but giving you a chance to at least win the game. Well, like the last time he pitched was against the New York Yankees. He kind of pitched around a couple of home runs, five walks in five innings, and turned it over to Michael Lorenz and Rysel Iglesias, who pitched two innings each to slam the door on the Yankees. So, you know, he kind of keeps his team in the ball game. His best pitch is going to be that changeup of his that he goes to when he really needs an out. His off-speed stuff needs to be on target today for him to have a good game. Span back off the disabled list when this series began. He had four hits in the series opening. And he looks at a strike. He had the home run leading off game two, wound up with a couple of hits in that one. And one hit in four at-bats yesterday. In the air to right center field. Shebler laid off Hamilton and is unable to make the catch. So a runner at second to lead off the Giants' first inning. I'm sure that will be charged as an error. Now he had it all the way because he waved off Billy Hamilton, both probably yelling at Hamilton and also waving his arm. We'll take another look. He went a long way to get it, Shebler did. But, I mean, this is a can of corn that should have been caught very easily. This shows you, though, why you should always run the ball out, even at this level where you think, that a ball is going to be caught 100 percent of the time you got to bust it and bust it hard and I, I think Span thought that ball was going to be caught he's on second base Joe Panic, the Giants second baseman at 271 takes a fastball away one home run for Panic, nine runs batted in Down the right field line, and that arrow will come back to hurt him. This will be an RBI double for Panic. And the Giants, just like that, lead 1 0 after two batters. Uh, Panic's thinking about getting that ball to the right side, but man, oh man, he gets one belt high, and he just levels on it. This ball comes off the wall. A lot of these come off the wall and he end up at first base. They come back so hard. This time he ends up in second base. Now time for Tim Adelman to stop thinking about, you know, trying to prevent any runs at all. Damage control has got to be foremost on his mind. Don't let this inning really get out of hand on you. Brandon Bell will do his job. Probably by Votto, but they'll get the first out of the inning and panic on the third base. The Reds on defense already a somewhat shaky start. Shebler the air, which leads to a run. Hamilton back in there. Duvall in left field. And again, Cozart out of the lineup. With Peraza, George Jeanette at second and Mezzarocco. For a second straight day behind the plate, Devin has caught three of the four games in this series. Now the Reds are going to bring the infield in for the best Giants hitter. Their perennial all-star catcher, Buster Posey. Posey is homered in four consecutive starts. He was nicked up after homering in three straight games during the New York series, just prior to the Reds and Giants getting together. Giants lead 2 nothing. I mean, we're four batters in the game, and the Reds look like they're in a fall. Well, the infield in, you, you make a 300 hitter, a 500 hitter, because those balls that go through the infield that would normally be caught by the shortstop just get on you so quickly. This guy can flat out hit Posey. You know, I've gone between thinking he's a low ball hitter to a good high ball hitter. 
Well, he hit a high ball up in his eyes out of the ballpark in the 17th inning the other night. That pitch a little bit more down in the zone. Now, Brandon Crawford, the Giants shortstop. Just a couple of weeks of this season with an injured groin. And like Span, he returned the first game of this series. And make no mistake, it's a very different looking Giants lineup when you have Crawford and Span in there rather than whomever they decided to play when the Giants were in Cincinnati. The Reds sweeping that three game series last week. They're two good players. And they're left handed, and they give right handers a lot tougher time than their replacement players do. Well, they are nearly jam packed in here today. They have sold out each of the games in this series, and we've mentioned before they have a long sellout streak going 531 if you include 25 games in the postseason. That is a record high sellout streak for a National League team. Second longest in MLB history, Boston Red Sox. 794, although there were a lot of no-shows the first three games of this series. Not so much today on this beautiful Sunday. Yeah, this will be more like one of those uh, pre-1993 sellouts when you actually have to walk through the turnstile. Three balls, two strikes on Brandon Crawford. Ball four. Two in, two on, one out, and the inning continues for Christian Arroyo. Told you in the celebration of Posey's 17th inning game-winning home run, we're going to highlight Arroyo for you. That's him right there. He got bumped right in the face. Right there, Samarja with a shoulder, and that's a broad shoulder of Jeff Samarja. Now, Arroyo did not play yesterday. Bruce Bochy said he was going to give him a day off anyway. I mean, other than injuring yourself riding a dirt bike on a day off, is there a worse way to get injured than at a celebration? Well, remember the game many years ago, and I'm going to draw a blank on the player's name, but Minnesota Twins, you may remember, had a player that in a post-game celebration broke his nose on a similar play just like that and was unable to play in the opening round of the playoffs. And how about Kendris Morales? He missed an entire year in a post-game celebration, just completely shattering his ankle. I think he had a compound fracture, if I'm not mistaken, from jumping on home plate in celebration. And now all of a sudden, the trainer's coming out. That's Steve Bauman uh, running out along with Brian Price and evidently to talk to Tim Alleman. Looks like he's complaining maybe about, you know, the muscles up around his neck. You know, he just can't, he's talking about there, you know, I can't get extension. He may have had a sore neck warming up. We don't know that. Sometimes you get up in the morning and you, you feel terrible. And you go down to warm up and you think, well, maybe I can work the kinks out. He's pretty animated out there in his description to Steve Bauman about uh, what exactly is going on. Now 
Well, they're still talking about it out there, and Brian Price, Mac Jenkins has also joined the crowd. I mean, really nobody knows except Tim Adelman, you know, whether he feels well enough to be able to continue pitching out there. I mean, they can talk about it all they want, and, you know, but the bottom line is it's not Brian Price's decision. It's up to Tim Adelman. If you can't pitch, you can't pitch. I guess they're going to give him a few throws, though, to see if he can't uh, figure out a way to do it, or they're just going to leave him in the ball game. We saw it like showed you a shot of Michael Lorenzen stretching back on the in the dugout on the steps. I don't know if he'd be the first guy the Reds would go to. A doubtful. But Brian Price is pretty confident that his bullpen is pretty much back to normal now after that outstanding full game effort. From Bonilla. So Adelman actually doesn't even take a warm up pitch. He just goes right back to game action and gets a swing and a miss by Arroyo. I don't know if I've ever seen that after a visit no. to the mound and all that discussion and and Adelman showing exactly what was going on or what he might be feeling and then all of a sudden. You know, generally, 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll throw one or two, as you mentioned, Chris, to see if everything's all right. Yeah. Now, in football, isn't there a rule where that player has to leave the field and miss a play or two? When they have yes, a, a timeout yes, like yes, that? Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, not charge as an official timeout right. here in baseball, but you, you get what I mean. In fact, it's not even charged as a visit to the mound by the by the manager. Uh, maybe a ground ball double play would be the best thing that could make his back feel a little better here. Three balls and two strikes. Runner's not going. And Arroyo fouls it back out of play. They were running on that 3-2 pitch with Posey at first and one out during the Crawford at bat, but not with Posey and Crawford and one out in the inning here. Twentieth pitch of this opening frame for Adelman. Runners are going, and it's ball four to load them up. This has been a rough first inning for Brian Price's team. It all began with a fly ball that was dropped by Shevler and Wright. Giants have two runs, and now they have them loaded. Boy, where is that pitch? Yeah. I mean, when you really need the pitch, and you think you make the perfect pitch. And you don't get the call. Boy, that's nothing you can do about it at this point. You just got to keep the ball down and hope you get a ground ball at somebody. Seventh batter to hit in this Giants opening frame is Eduardo Nunez, a left fielder. 246 average, seven batted in. Good pitch there in on his hands and chopped foul. Reds are going to get activity started right away in their bullpen. Barrett Aston. <laughs> Base hit left field. One run scores. They're going to wave around Crawford, and he will score. Four nothing Giants. Now Nunez goes down to get a pitch right around his knees, and he hits it very sharply by the third baseman. I was really surprised to see them try to score on the arm of Duval, but he makes a good throw, just not able to contain it is Devin Mezzarocco, and the Giants now have got four in in this inning. Red to bring the infield in. Ruggiano, the number eight batter, with runners at second and third, and one out. Good block there by Devin.
Duvall charged with a throwing error. There's a ground ball. Peraza comes to the plate. And Mesoraco will feed Suarez and apply the tag on Arroyo. Second out of the inning. Charged with two errors here in that opening inning. That's a tough error to give the ball. I mean, that's well, a one hop throw to the plate, and you know, sometimes the catcher can handle that, sometimes they can't with a runner bearing in on it. Now, that's really where it, you could almost argue for a team error in a game of baseball because it was it was a pretty good throw, and but because the runner got the second base, you've got to account for that somehow. Samarjulis, a fly ball to right. Shubler's got it. Nine men back, four score in the Giants' opening inning. Award-winning lineup only at your Tri-State Chevy dealer. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good, it's Skyline time. Pink bats provided by Louisville Slugger. 12th season for MLB. And Louisville Slugger going to bat against breast cancer. They have raised well into seven figures to fight breast cancer. And for the first time, using them all weekend, yesterday and today. Happy Mother's Day again to everyone out there. Happy Mother's Day in D. Hope everybody's making sure that mom has a great day today. They earn it every minute of every day. Samarja so spotted to a 4 nothing lead. We had Giving you a peek inside the numbers, a lack of run support. Samarja has been given by his mates through his first seven starts, or more accurately, lack thereof. But took advantage of an error. One big one, the first batter of the inning on the drop five ball. And, and really that 3-2 pitch, it was called ball four. That one looped into right center field and a base hit for a Eugenio Suarez. around these parts there are a lot of eyes glued to a different channel on the television as across the bay in Oakland California the Western Conference Finals begin today 
the Golden State Warriors trying for a third straight trip to the NBA Finals playing game one against the San Antonio Spurs a game already into the second quarter that ball up and away and the Cleveland Cavaliers after sweeping their first series sweeping their second series continue to wait for the Eastern Conference Finals to begin I guess game seven is what tomorrow night between Washington and the Boston Celtics to determine when the Cavaliers will then start on Wednesday really where they're going to play because if Boston wins they wound up being the number one seed the Cavaliers will start at the Boston Garden if Washington wins the Cavaliers will be at home in downtown Cleveland. Of course, we'll have all the coverage for you. Pre-game, post-game on Fox Sports Ohio as the Cavaliers try and make it back-to-back -back NBA titles. One ball and two strikes on Scott Shevlin. I think everybody feels like it's almost destined to happen, right, Chris? The, the Cavs and the Warriors sure round like three. It. I think a lot of people would love to see it. Although San Antonio is having something to say about that so far today. They are beating Golden State by 20 points in the second quarter. Span will squeeze it tightly for the first out in the Reds' second inning. I know you walked to the ballpark today. I did the same thing and came walking down, what, 3rd Street mm -hmm. here and see that huge crowd waiting for the San Antonio Spurs to get on the team bus. There you see it right yeah. over there. They have the Oakland A's baseball stadium right next door to where they're playing game one of the Western Conference Final, the home of the Warriors. Jose Peraza looks at ball one. He had a single and drew two walks, which is quite rare for Jose in the game yesterday. Barrett Ashton continues to warm up down the right field line. As we're getting near the bottom pad of the batting order, it makes you wonder if Brian Price hasn't already made the decision. This one in the air to short left field, and that's a second out of the inning. But maybe Tim Adelman's day is finished already. And man, if he's injured, it is another in a long, long, long line of injured starting pitchers for this Cincinnati Reds franchise going all the way back to before the season ever began. No, you're right, but the good news is that some of those guys that have been injured a long time, like Homer Bailey, for instance, the word is beginning to, to get good on him, that he's throwing some bullpens and evidently feeling pretty good. Brandon Finnegan playing catch. Of course, they have Amir Garrett down in the minor leagues. They can call up at any time. They're down there trying to make sure he doesn't Overstretches innings and pitches and so on, but I imagine he'll be back sooner than later. Yeah, Homer Bailey threw a bullpen session yesterday, as Chris mentioned, of nearly 50 pitches. But again, you know, you when you start eyeing a possible return, you have to remember that's a bullpen session, and there has to be another couple of those before then you face some live hitters in BP and then you go out on the rehab and that's a long time down the road.
Jim Day will be all over that, I'm sure. And the Reds bring in the right-hander Barrett Aston here in the second inning. Now Barrett Aston came to the Reds by way of the Milwaukee Brewers. He was originally drafted by the Brewers out of Arkansas and in 2013 and then was included in the trade that sent Jonathan Broxton from the Reds to the Brewers. Reds also got Kevin Shackelford in that deal. Happened in September 2014. Good fastball, not overpowering. His main pitch, though, is a good overhand curveball. He may call it a slider. You call it a slurve. It's one of those hard curves that has some real cutting and darting action. Aston made the opening day roster one of seven to begin this season as a first-year player for the Reds. Played his major league debut on opening day against Philadelphia. In fact, it was his first professional game above the double-A level. He's been up and down a number of times already this year. Yeah, it always seems to be one or two pitchers every year that yeah. is on that I-71 shuttle between Louisville and Cincinnati. And this year so far, it's been Barrett Aston. But he'll take it. I mean, when your alternative is pitching in Louisville full-time, why not get some big league time in? Meal money's better. Food's better. Beer's colder. Well, maybe not that, but sure seems like it is. Oh, I'm sure. And that's a pretty nice little drive from Cincinnati down to Louisville through Especially the rolling hills of the Commonwealth. Well, if you're a baseball player, you like going northbound a lot better than you go, uh, going no south. No doubt you know what I'm about that. <laughs> Span led off the first inning at a fly ball. Hit it pretty well into right center field. You and I were talking off the air. You know, Shebler waved off Billy Hamilton. And dropped the ball, allowing Span to end up at second base. He would score in that four-run first inning. I'm not so sure it shouldn't be standard operating procedure that if Billy Hamilton standing there, he never gets waved yeah. off. Yeah. He's that good. I mean, take a look at this. Ten first inning runs, the fewest in all of Major League Baseball, the first 35 games of the year. They score seven in the first inning of the four games of this series. Now this one is blasted and will sail over Shebler's head. This has perhaps a triple written all over it. He's making the turn, heading for third. He will get there easily. I tell you, this guy's playing like Barry Bonds in this series. Every time he comes to the plate, you're waiting for a cherry bomb to go off. And this ball is really slug. Pretty much center cut. Panic now the batter. He had a run scoring double in the first inning, and he's down strike one. The Reds will bring their infield in. Nobody out. Runner at third. Shebler's got it. Span will tag. And Span will score. Five nothing San Francisco. Brandon Belt down a strike. Giants begin play today. 14 wins, 24 losses, a whopping nine games behind front-running Colorado. 
but they've picked up games in each of the last two days. Rockies have dropped two in a row to the streaking Dodgers, who begin play a half game out of first in the NL West. Dodgers have won eight of their last ten. And a wild game developing already in Denver today. They're just in the fifth inning, and the Rockies with a 5-4 lead. Cardinals, meanwhile, are batting in the bottom of the eighth inning, and Adam Wainwright, we were watching a little bit of that game today. He appears to be getting stronger and stronger. It's been a while for Wainwright. They were really worried about him at the beginning of the year. His velocity was off. His curveball was just kind of rolling up there. But his slider looked especially good today, and he's been giving the Cubs a lot of problems this afternoon. That's now a 5-0 game. That would be Arietta getting the loss in that when unless the Cubbies can rally in the ninth. In fact, they're going to the ninth inning now. <laughs> Triple sack fly walk. In this second inning, the first out of the Reds' bullpen for Barrett Aston. Nothing and one on Posey, who had a run-scoring single his first time up and would later score in the four-run first inning. And now he's hit by a pitch. Of course, he was plunked earlier this year by Taiwan Walker, a 93-mile-per-hour fastball in the head. Reds are hoping Aston can get things together in a hurry. He's allowed a couple of rockets leading to a run and now a walk and a hit batter. Brandon Crawford walked on that very, very close 3-2 pitch. Oh, no, that was Arroyo walked on that 3-2 pitch. That was a big call in this inning. It was a really big call. Two things in that inning really unfolded to hurt Tim Allen quite a bit not his physical condition but the drop ball in right center field and then that 3 2 fastball that was right on the black but he didn't get the call well, right on the black according to our Fox tracks anyway. You know, this is the kind of game I think that Brian Price was more concerned about happening yesterday when sending out in a kind of an emergency starter and Lisa Verto Bonilla, you know, telling him ahead of time, hey, you're going to be out there for a long time regardless of how, how this game goes. Well, they got a good outing out of him. Bonilla kept the team in the game the entire ball game. And now this one on the verge of being blown wide open. Brandon Crawford taking a hack at a 3-0 pitch. Three balls and a strike on the Giants shortstop. Three and two. Now we saw the Giants twice in that First inning on three two pitches start runners, including Buster Posey as a runner at first and Buster Posey as a runner at second. Would they do it with one out here an inning later? There they go. And this one's headed for the corner. Two runs are going to score, and the Giants have taken a 7 0 lead.
Uh, you start the runners and then you get a little ball down the left field line and everybody's going to score. Good bit of hitting by Crawford. He stays right on it and keeps it fair down the left field line. Rattles around in the corner. Posey scores from first base. Yikes, this looks like one of those games the Reds played against the Giants back in Cincinnati on the 5th and the 6th of May. They, they went scored, the other way. Yeah, they went the other way. They scored 13 in the first of those three games and then 14 runs the next day before completing the sweep with a 4 nothing shutout by Scott Feldman. And the Giants could not have looked worse in those three games. I mean, I didn't think they had a breath of life left. You come over here, they win a 17-inning game on a home run by Posey. They win a tight, well-pitched game yesterday, and now they jump out to a 7-0 lead here. Boy, things change in a hurry around here. came with a reputation and they talked a lot about it in spring training that this guy was a strike thrower. He is having a really difficult time finding the plate and this is first inning out of the bullpen. Walked a batter, hit a batter. Four of the batters in the inning he's gone to a three ball count. This is already the third highest run total in a game for the Giants this season. Two times with Johnny Cueto on the mound, they've scored eight runs. Well, didn't we show you a graphic at the very beginning of the game that Jeff Samarja gets no run support at all by this Giants team? We He's did. Second worst in the league. That number's about to change. Tap her down to Suarez. But isn't it funny, you know, Chris, how the numbers can tell you what you want to hear sometimes, mm -hmm. and they can be quite misleading other times. I mean, if the Giants end up getting two or three more runs in this game, we're only in the second inning, and they get, you know, nine, ten runs, all of a sudden you, you put on that total for some margin. The next team, you know, what kind of run support has Jeff Samarja had? All of a sudden he might be in the top five in the league. <laughs> That's why you really got to break it down game by game, especially when you're at this point in the season. Small sample sizes can be very deceiving. I mean, look at that great run output that the Reds had against the Giants back in Cincinnati, May 5 and 6. You know, 17 runs in two games. That really changes their, you know, their run differential. Sure. All of a sudden, it looks like the Reds have been blowing everybody out. Suarez fields the sharp grounder off the bat of Nunez. A three-run Giants second inning and a 7-0 lead at the end of two.
American Ballpark has it all. Indoor, outdoor seating with a great view of the field, TVs, and a ballpark buffet. If you're looking for something to do with your group, 35 to 45, check out the Norcom Super Suite. Visit reds.com slash groups. Long way to go in this game and for the Reds as they bat in the third, trailing 7 nothing. Four in the first, three in the Giants' second. Tim Adelman having to leave the game at the end of an inning with an injury of some type. If we hear any word from the Reds' clubhouse, we'll certainly pass it along. Barrett Ashton gave up three in his only inning of work. He will bat to start this third inning. First career at bat for Barrett Aston. And he's out of there on strikes. You know, I had the pleasure, and we have the pleasure, of working with so many talented people and good people all across the country. And for about a decade on the Fox Network, having the opportunity to work with a largely San Francisco-based television crew under their director, Jim Lynch, and doing Fox Saturday baseball and the baseball playoffs every year. And one of my favorite people I've ever come in contact with, and we've remained friends for a long, long time, even though those days are in the rearview mirror, is David Benzer, a 35-year cameraman, diagnosed with stage four cancer five years ago. Thank God was able to beat it and started a mission, Strikeout Fear Foundation, which they are paying tribute to here today at this ballpark. There's Benny, his wife Madison. But the mission is to build a bridge from fear to hope for people diagnosed with cancer. They've really done some very cool stuff. As here's a base hit by Hamilton. They go around to hospitals and they're really getting this foundation up and running. But they create comforting, life-affirming waiting rooms in cancer clinics across the country. So, you know, maybe you have a relative diagnosed with cancer. You're scared to death, naturally. Well, they're providing a waiting room in there, and they'll come in and they'll redesign and reconfigure the whole thing with computers that family members can use uh, to be there to talk you through some of the things that might happen. They've helped more than 45,000 cancer patients and over 330,000 patient visits. If you'd like to learn more, and I would encourage you to, go to www.strikeoutfear. Just like it sounds, all one word, strikeoutfear.org. Benny the Bull. Boy, he was a bull in the fight against cancer, and good for him, and... May they continue the good fight. One ball and one strike on Scooter Jeanette. Two and one. Reds will be boarding the big Delta flight after the ball game tonight and make their way to Chicago and off day tomorrow. And then start a three game series Tuesday night. They'll play Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon against the Cubs before coming back for a brief five game homestand against Colorado and Cleveland. Two and two on Jeanette. You know, even with the day game here in San Francisco today, the ball club will probably not get into Chicago until somewhere around midnight. Mm -hmm. So that off day, especially on the, you know, just a couple of days away from that 17 inning game, will be, I'm sure, enjoyed by a lot of people tomorrow. Jeanette, not quite sure about that strike three pitch. Can't blame him. Like it caught the plate, at least by the looks of our Fox tracks. Uh, 
Votto hit a double on a breaking pitch. The first pitch he saw in the at bat first time up. That one was a fastball there by Samarja. Who used to dial it up, averaging 95, 96 miles an hour on his fastball. He's not quite there anymore. The double that was hit by Votto in the first was his 319th career double. It broke a tie for being eighth on the Reds all-time list. Broke that tie with Frank Robinson. So now it is all alone in that number seven spot is Joey. Nothing at two on Votto. Just off the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes. Samarja against Vado. Full count. Boy, Votto is seeing the ball so well right now. I, I mean, even on these pitches that are fairly close, I mean, he never lunges. He never looks like he doesn't see him. I mean, he recognizes that pitch so early. Barry Bonds used to say, watch the ball coming out of a pipe. If it's not inside the pipe when it comes out of the pitcher's hand, it's not going to be a strike. And another base hit by Vado. Hamilton will easily advance first to third. And now Duball. Well, that guy, this guy can flat out hit now. I mean, after a couple of fastballs, trying to get him chase something up, he gets a breaking ball down on a 3-2 count. Just a nice, easy swing right there to put the bat head on the ball. If Duvall can run into one here, all of a sudden you start thinking to yourself, we have a chance to get back into this thing. I mean, granted, it's seven to nothing. The likelihood of that happening is not all that great. But stranger things have certainly happened. Well, it doesn't even need to be a home run. It can be a single. I mean, you just score one in this inning, and then you kind of at least stem the tide, or at least the momentum a little bit. A big fly would be nice. That's what the Brewers are doing right now. They were getting clobbered by the Mets a little while ago. Seven to one. All of a sudden, that's an eight to six game. A one to to ball, and that's a breaking ball in the dirt. One ball and one strike. Now, Samarge is a guy that the opposition has hit some home runs off of. He has given up seven of them. Well, the Giants have spent a king's ransom on their starting rotation. And Samarja certainly fits right into that. Signed through the 2020 season. It's just amazing the way the game has changed in regard to players getting paid. When you consider last year was the first season since 2011. And that year, Samarja pitched 75 games as a reliever. 
Last year was the first season in his career where he was over 500. Well, he's 18 games under 500 in his career, counting the 0-5 this season. And 18 I mean, games under. Yeah, and they're, they're paying him like a number one starter. Down the left field line, but hooking foul. That had more than enough juice to get out of here. I mean, it's it's just amazing. Well, the Giants have a big payroll anyway. They're right around $180 million, which is roughly double of what the Reds are spending. And so Samarja is fourth on their list behind Johnny Cueto, Buster Posey, Matt Kane, and then Samarja. Yeah, the fifth highest starter on this team is the best starter on this team, who's injured right now in Madison Bumgarner. How about that? One and two, the count on Adam Duvall. Breaking ball away. And you can say, well, you know, wins and losses, a pitcher can't control that. We understand that. We talk about that all the time. And Samar just had some seasons where the ERA was pretty good. But he's also had some seasons where it wasn't good at all. You know, they signed him after a really disappointing year. His only year with the Chicago White Sox. His earned run average was almost five. You know what I've always seen out of Samarja is a guy who is extremely athletic, big and strong, throws hard, has tons of potential and a high ceiling. But it seems like his fastball runs a lot, but it stays on the same plane. He never gets his fingers on top of the ball to make it sink and drive drive the ball down it runs from side to side just like that last one that came in and nearly hit Duval. Three balls two strikes. Votto will start at first base with two away in the inning. And that one is a laser into left field. That's a big play right there. Wow. By Nunez. That ball gets by him. Two runs are scoring and the Reds are in business. That's a nice play. Triple play suites at Great American Ballpark. Private climate controlled indoor space where you can step right outside, watch the action from the patio. Plus your game ticket includes a catered buffet. Book today at reds.com slash groups. Giants lead 7-0. Four in the first, three in the second. Oh, what a big time play that was by Eduardo Nunez. Lujayano to start it and then Samarja. Span will bat for the third time.
Kentucky went around, and that will take care of Buster er, of Justin Ruggiano to open the third inning. First strikeout for Barrett Aston. Mother's Day 2017, enjoying the ball game. Family alongside. See, there's a big difference between taking those shots of folks in and around this ballpark in the sun as opposed <laughs> to those in the shape. Well, where's our Jim Day about now? Is he, is he uh, a in he, the sun kind of guy? Well, I think he's making himself find some shade down there. Jim Day is now standing up and waving at us, telling us he's in the sun. That's, that's a fair, fair ball. ball, and that's a second out of the inning. Jim Day, you're a wee bit warmer than you were here as the night went on Friday night. Yes, it's been two straight warm days. And as you said, in the sun, when you're in the sun, it's a whole lot different than in the shade. A little chilly in the shade, but all in all, we'll take it. I mean, you could go from sunscreen to ski caps. Yes. I mean, just in a, a matter of just a few rows. And we'll show you some shots of some fans sitting in the uh, the shade and knew they were going to sit in the shade. And they came prepared. You see some jackets, <laughs> sweaters, scarves, all bundled up. It's a good pitch right there by Aston. Ah, but in the sunshine with mom. Every day is sunshine with mom. And the sun shining on Barrett Aston here in the third. A perfect inning. We're on our way to the fourth. by T-Mobile. Bad news for the Yankees. Some left shoulder rotator cuff inflammation for the longtime Red standout Aroldis Chapman. They're expecting him to miss at least a month. They have Bryce Harper signing that $21 million one-year deal for next season, the 2018 year, avoiding arbitration. Then proceeded to hit a game-ending home run against Philadelphia. He added another home run today in a Washington loss, 4-3 against the Phils. So 12 home runs for Bryce Harper. Suarez to third things here in the Reds' fourth inning. 
Reds trailing 7 nothing to Samarja and the Giants. Final game of four. And the Reds won the opener. Reds coming off that great home stand. And you thought they had brought that momentum here to San Francisco when they walked away with a one-run win behind Bronson Arroyo here on Thursday night. But, Chris, you said it earlier, it's so... You watch baseball forever. It's amazing how quickly things can change, and it's really you know, play here or a play there. You lose a 17-inning game, and you come back yesterday. You, you go back-to-back -back games where you go 0 for 18, batting with runners in scoring position. And now all of a sudden, these games are going to happen where the opposition just jumps on you, and that's the story at least so far today. And that's the, the story of being a major league manager. You're expected to manage through all those different scenarios. Two and two on Suarez. He had a single in the right field his first time up. It's a final from St. Louis. The Cardinals win two of three over the weekend against the Chicago Cubs. Five nothing the final today. Wainwright over Arietta. Cubs are now one game under 500. There's a pop up in a short right center. This could be trouble. And nearly a collision out there. Panic and Ruggiano. That time Ruggiano recognized that panic was coming out there. That is a situation where you see the worst collisions in the game of baseball. When an infielder is running out and an outfielder is running in, they're both looking at the ball and neither sees each other until it's too late. Now Scott Shebler. He flied out to center field, his only time up. One ball and one strike on Shebler. They had him positioned perfectly on the ground ball. Just to the third base side of his second base bag, and Crawford throws out Scott. Two up, two down, and Peraza making his way to the plate. He fly to left field his first time up. Breaking ball misses up and away on Peraza. One ball and one strike. Yeah, notice how Jose Peraza, his head kind of moves forward like he gets his weight over on the balls of his feet as that pitch is coming. You know, you get your head away from your core and you lose a lot of your strength. And we saw Jose Peraza play last year. Now he was on the ball club and, and sat for a long period of time. But when he did get a chance to play, I think a lot of people were quite surprised and impressed by his the pop in his swing. 
And we haven't seen that yet this year. I mean, all that head has to do is drift a couple of inches over your toes, and you really you can't get your legs into the swing anymore. Marge, you wanted that call, didn't get it. Well, Peraza, so far this year, to back up what you're talking about, Peraza has a grand total of five extra base hits. Now, look, he's not going to make his living hitting the ball in the seats, but you're right, compared to what we saw playing pretty regularly over the final month and a half, nearly two months of last year. He's just an entirely different looking hitter. Probably meatloaf. She makes a mean meatloaf. It's pretty dang good. So she does the mashed potatoes and the, the corn. Obviously, corn, Iowa, goes together. So we have sweet corn with it, so. My mom hates cooking, but she did used to make some good spaghetti back in the day. My parents used to cook, uh, it was a like a baked chicken and rice that I, I loved. I enjoyed it very much. Doing a little different this year, asking players their favorite mom cooked meal. And all the players to a man would love to say happy birthday to all their moms watching out there through us. So, again, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, indeed. One ball and one strike on Panic. Two, three, four in the giant batting order. San Francisco a 7-0 lead. Four in the first inning. Red starter Tim Adelman had to leave the game injured. And then three in the second inning. That will sneak through into center field to hit for Panic. Two out of two with a couple of runs batted in today. Brandon Belt has bounced out to Votto, walked and scored a run. Giants now with six hits. One of the four runs against Adelman was an unearned run. That was the first batter of the game. When Scott Shevler misplayed the fly ball in right field and was charged with an error. That was Spann who hit that ball, and he scored an unearned run. All the runs against Aston have been earned runs. 
Duvall looking into the bright sunshine. And Adam makes a play. One out. That Milwaukee team, we know how well that team can hit. They were down 7-1. to one. That is now a 9-8 to eight game with the Mets in front in the bottom of the eighth inning. Especially in that home ballpark, the Brewers just mash away on opponents. Yeah, the Brewers scored two in the sixth, three in the seventh, and two in the eighth to make it a one-run game. They are the second highest scoring team in the league behind the Washington Nationals are the Brewers. And they lead the lead, of course, in home runs. Two and zero on Buster Posey. Strike one. Here's ball four. Game break time. Cubs and the Cardinals. Let's check in with Jeff Pacoro in our studios in Cincinnati. Sure do, and they love it when they get together with the Cubs, especially their longtime rivals to the north. There's a fly ball caught in center by Hamilton, and Panic will advance 90 feet on the third, so they're on the corners with two outs in the inning. Okay, that is such a special rivalry between the Cubs and the Cardinals, having had the chance to broadcast the Cubs games for six seasons. You go down there and play at the old Bush Stadium or when the Cardinals would come to Wrigley Field. It's a great atmosphere. And stronger than ever, that rivalry now. Because mm -hmm. it used to be the Cardinals would really look down their noses at, uh, at the Cubs and, you know, all the success the Cardinals have had and the lack thereof for the Cubs. Well, that changed mightily a year ago.
T Park. It's out in center field under the bleachers. And again, you would expect nothing less from one of the technology capitals of the world. They have gone virtual reality here at AT&T Park. They've got a fan station out there that's kind of like the Connect Zone in Cincinnati where you go on there and browse the internet, et cetera. But now they have virtual reality where you they've got cameras all over the ballpark where you can literally experience the game from Bruce Bochy's view, et cetera. 2017, who would have ever thought that you could enhance the game like that, but they've gone virtual reality here in the big San Francisco. Looks pretty cool. Might be worth checking that out sometime. We come back next summer. I read a sign in, in a little restaurant establishment last night that, that said, San Francisco, 48 miles surrounded entirely by reality. Hmm. <laughs> well, reality can come at you from a number of different angles. And part of that in this area these days is trying to find a place to live. <laughs> it is staggering the, the cost of housing, whether it be rental, to buy, forget about it. I mean, it's become a real, real issue for, you know, a lot of folks who are just trying to, you know, live in paycheck to paycheck and try to find a way to raise a family in and around this area. We talk to so many people who you know, try to find places to live. And man, oh man, oh man, gone through the roof. Mezzarocco jumps all over one down the line, and that is a foul ball. Now, we mentioned the other night, you know, Mezzarocco had a double in the second inning of last night's game, and, and we're starting to see now these last couple of days him turn on some pitches. Yeah, really getting locked in more and more on the fastball, especially the fastball up. Very dangerous to pitch him upstairs like that. What a difference it would make in this Reds lineup. Oh, wow. If all of a sudden Mezzarocco, who by and large is hitting eighth every game he starts. Well, they had visions when they gave him that four-year contract now three years ago. And through the first two years, of course, he's basically not played at all. But they had visions of him being right in the middle of that lineup and hitting you 25 to 30 home runs, knocking in 80 to 100. Still working on getting that timing back after all the the misplaying time. 3-2 on Mezzarocco. Little blooper, and that'll fall in a hit. Mezzarocco will slam on the brakes. You know, interesting the way Brian Price is trying to carve out playing time for both Devin Mezzarocco and Tucker Barnhart, recognizing there's a third catcher on the roster, too, and Justin, or Stuart Turner. But... What he's done is, is have these guys catch back-to-back -back games, recognizing that there is a, a flow to getting regular playing time. So it's a lot, I think, more difficult for a catcher to catch every other game than it is to catch a couple of games in a row and then take a day off and then a couple more in a row and so on. So you, you try to get them in a certain amount of rhythm. Speaking of Tucker Barnard, he will bat for Barrett Aston. And shoots this one to the left center field gap. It'll go into the alley. That'll be a pinch hit double for Barnhart. And on his way to third is Mezzarocco. Interesting. Well, now you're rolling over to the top of the order. Well, Tucker looking first pitch fastball. That's what I'm talking about with Samarge's fastball. He throws it hard. I mean, today he's touched 96 miles an hour. But... It stays on the same plane, has a lot of run. We see that from the center field camera, but it doesn't oftentimes change planes. And that's where you get the ground ball or the easy pop-up and so on, although Mezzarocco's was on the end of the bat. And Samarges is, you know, four innings into a shutout. But you think with somebody with the talent that he has, he wouldn't be, you know, 20 games under 500 in his career or close to it.
And look, you can try as you might. You can't make me believe that that's just bad luck. 20 games under 500 is not bad luck. Especially when you've been blessed with the kind of talent that you pointed out so margin has been given. It's not beating the guy up. It's just reality. We're surrounded by reality. Everywhere. I was in the Vesuvio. You ever, you ever go to the Vesuvio? No. Famous place. Right next to Jack Kerouac Alley. Mm. But Billy's had a couple of those. He had a big one the other night in that 17 inning game where he hit a laser against a drawn in infield right at the second baseman, an inning the Reds obviously did not score. Aston goes three innings, allows three earned runs. He gave up three hits. He hit a batter and walked a couple of batters. One strikeout. Now Jeanette, let's see if the Reds can get on the board. Samarja got one start in that division series last year against his former team, the team that brought him to the major leagues, the Chicago Cubs, and it was a night to forget. He gave up six hits and four runs in just two innings in that start and was hung with a loss. That was a series that if the Giants really had any bullpen, my oh my how so much could have changed. Remember, they had that big lead in game four, knowing that in game five, Jody Cueto was set to pitch, and that was in the best of five series. Had game five come around the way Cueto had dominated Chicago during his entire career, you can only what wonder what may have been. But the Giants blew a four-run lead, something they had done all year long. They blew more saves total and blew more saves in the ninth inning than any team in Major League Baseball last year. Then they went out and spent a fortune on Mark Melanson, and right now he's on the disabled list. Two and two on Scooter Jeanette. Jeanette has struck out swinging and has struck out looking. You talk about Melanson, the closer here with the Giants being on the disabled list. It's been a tough couple of weeks for disabled list closers. The road is Chapman going on the disabled list. Curious Familia with the Mets having blood clot surgery. Two two again. I imagine if you are a ball club that have your your scheduled closer still healthy and intact here in the middle of May, you're probably very happy about that. Comparing how many of them have be, been beset, and there have been a few of them that have already lost their jobs. Frankie Rodriguez. Zach Britton, another closer, has been hurt. You're right. After saving, fit, what, 54 straight save opportunities? And there's a base hit in the left center field. That'll bring in two runs. Well, now all of a sudden the Reds have a chance to make things a little bit interesting. 
It is a 7-2 ball game, and there's still only one out in the inning, and the big hitter's coming up. What a really good at bat for Scooter Jeanette. I mean, he fouled him off. He took some close ones. And just some Marjorie just unable to put him away. Look at all the pitches that he has thrown, and he finally throws one pretty much in the meat of the strike zone, and Jeanette lays out a line drive over the head of the second baseman. Guy's a little grinder, isn't he? Sure is. You know, we brought up the other day that most regular position players, guys who play, you know, every day in the lineup, they're anywhere from 110 to 135, 140 official at bats. And here you have Jeanette, who is anything but a regular player. He has 70 at bats on the year, and he now has 17 runs batted in. You, know, you look at a guy like uh, Schembler. I mean, it's a guy we all kind of feel like starting to really become a, a legitimate everyday major league player. Schembler only has four more runs batted in in 60 more at bats. Now Vado, two out of two in a game so far today, a double and a single. Breaking ball to Votto, and it's one ball and one strike. Well, we were just talking about those Brewers a minute ago. They were down 7-1 to one today. They have just scored three times in the bottom of the ninth inning to beat the New York Mets 11-9. to nine. And the streaking Brew crew, they've now ripped off three straight wins, and they're one game out of first place. Two and one on Joey Votto. Well, they did their damage, I beg your pardon, in the eighth inning. They just closed it out in the ninth. They got five <laughs> runs in the eighth inning to win that game. Five in the eighth. And that's without Familia. You just brought up a minute ago. Yeah. You know, he blew a save earlier in the week against these Giants, and then they found the blood clots. And immediately he went in to get that worked out and on the disabled list. And remember that it was the, it's the Brewers closer, Neftali Feliz, who also has lost his That's right. closing job. That save today went to Corey Knable. And of course, nobody can keep the job as closer of the Washington Nationals. I mean, that's a team that is 23 and 13 Without a closer, they've used five guys to try and close games this year. Three and two now on Samarja. That will be a team that will be extremely active in trying to find a legitimate hammer because they, they believe that they have what it takes to make a, a run at a World Series title. Three, two to Votto. Down to first. And a relay throw, inning over. Reds get two, halfway through it. Giants lead by five.
Brought to you by Cincinnati Children, changing the outcome together. And by your local Ford dealer, Ford, go further. Always send a special hello to those watching over at Cincinnati Children's today. Hoping you're having a great day on this Mother's Day. I hope every mom is doing the same thing, having a great, great day. Reds are down 7-2. Giants will hit in the fifth inning. A new battery for the Reds. Tucker will stay in the game behind a plate. And now on the mound, replacing Barrett Aston is Austin Bryce. It'll be Austin Bryce's fourth game of the year. He has been pretty impressive, to say the least. Has not given up a run yet. Has struck out four and not given up a base on balls. Hard-throwing right-hander from North Carolina. Reds picked him up in that deal that sent Dan Straley down to the Marlins. Broken bat, base hit, center field by Nunez. You know, you say on this pitch, well, what, what a lucky hit. Got out of the end of the bat and just hit it in the center field, but that was a pitcher's pitch, and you have to give Nunez a lot of credit for hanging right in there and leaning out over the plate, at least even getting the bat on the ball. Got some sad news today out of Kansas City. Steve Palermo. You may remember him, a major league umpire whose career was ended when he was shot in the back while attempting to break up a mugging back in 1991. Passed away today, 67 years young. That mugging was going on in the parking lot of a Dallas restaurant back on July the 7th of 1991. He came to the aid of a robbery victim and was shot in the back. Two waitresses were being mugged. One bullet missed, but the other one sliced into his waist, bounced off a kidney, and went through his abdomen, breaking bone and pushing into the spinal cord. It missed killing him, they said, by one millimeter. He was told he would never walk again. His umpiring career was over. But he did recover and was able to walk with the use of a cane. Sorry to share that news. Runner is safe at second base. Palermo had been working for Major League Baseball as a special assistant since 1994. Really a shame. Thoughts and prayers with his family and so many friends around baseball. You know, one footnote on that, Tom, when he was told he would never walk again, as you mentioned, he did end up walking again, actually so quickly after his, after that shooting, that he threw out the first pitch of the 1991 World Series. Mm -hmm. Made it out to the mound with a cane. He had worked an all-star game several playoff games and the 1983 World Series. One and two on Ruggiano after the stolen base by Nunez, his eighth in nine attempts on the season.
Two and two on Ruggiano. Samarja do up next. Rounder down to third. Suarez will make sure the runner stays at second. And that's the first out of the inning. MLB.com at bat is your number one mobile app for live Reds baseball. You stay connected. Get Reds home screen icons and app features as well as game day, radio broadcast, stat cast, news, and so much more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Giants seven, Reds two. Last to the fifth. Runner at second, one out. Pitcher v. Pitcher here. Bryce Samarja. There goes the runner, and there was zero chance for Tucker Barnhart there. I'm not sure Bryce ever even looked back, and Nunez had picked it up by then, and he's stolen second and now third. Well, if you've got a flaw, they'll find it here in the major leagues, and they'll eventually exploit it. But as good as Austin Bryce has been, that's one area, I think, where he could use a little improvement. That's only the 16th stolen base of the year for the Giants and the fifth in the last couple of games. Yeah, they found that same sort of uh, shortcoming in yesterday's starter, mm -hmm. Bonilla. Now Bryce has fallen behind some margin three and one. Now three and two. Need a strike out here. And he gets it two away. One more out to go now for Austin Bryce. We're in the fifth inning, and Denard Spann is walking up there for the fourth time. He has scored a couple of runs, one of three as a triple. And Barnhart, a quick visit out to Bryce. Nice way to spend a Sunday afternoon out there, isn't it? Till a real big boat comes by. It's like that scene from Caddyshack. You know, they're christening <laughs> Ted Knight's boat, and then here comes Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> You're washing up on shore.
really good chicken and dumplings. Oh, she makes really good tacos. I like all your cooking, Mom. If this is getting on there. Um, but favorite one, uh, probably her uh, bolognese sauce. Pot roast. Oh, yeah, love it. Cock, it's in a crock pot. Amazing. Anthony D. Sclafani, very smart, like all of your cooking, Mom. I just want to stress that. And by the way, Michael Lorenzo was in there. His mom has been here this weekend since uh, down the road in California, so he was able to see Mom on Mom's Day. Well, we saw him walking around town uh, when we first got into town. Had a chance to say hello to Michael's mom. Two and two on Duvall leading things off here in the Reds sixth inning. Still a long way to go in this one. Reds down by five after getting a pair of runs in the fifth. It has a big double play ball. So Margie was able to get Votto on. Hit the ball hard. One hopper but right at Brandon Belt. After the Reds had scored twice and had a runner aboard in that fifth inning. See if Duvall can get aboard and start things in the sixth. Three, two, pitch. Nope. One away. Seven strikeout for Samarji. Right at the top of the strike zone, Duvall thought that that could have been high, but it was well within the zone. Just couldn't pull the trigger. So now Suarez in the hole at short. Crawford, one of the smoothest defenders in the league. We invite all the deadheads out there to unite. The Reds' new Grateful Dead ticket package for as low as $25. You'll get a Reds ticket and a limited edition Terrapin Turple, Turtles figurine. Get yours today at Reds.com slash Grateful Dead. That figurine, by the way, is only available with a purchase of the Grateful Dead ticket package. Two down for Shubler. 0 for 2 in a game. A fly ball to center and a ground out to short. Breaking ball in there, a strike. We'll hear a lot of ooing and eyeing going on in the crowd. Told you over in Oakland, it's game one of the Western Conference Finals. Golden State was down 20. And it is a tie game with about a minute 20 left to play. So the crowd a moment ago reacting to a Curry three-pointer, which tied the game.
Fastball up high, two and two to count on Shevlin. And that's all for the Reds. Kick off to the summertime is the Memorial Tournament presented by Nationwide. That, of course, is at Muirfield Village Golf Club, May the 29th through June the 4th. And you can order your badges at memorialbadges.com. And speaking of golf, no better way to wrap up a weekend than hitting inside the golf zone with our friend Jim Hanlon. Presented by Varmint Guard. That comes your way tonight. At 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Ohio and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Of course, that memorial is the tournament the Jack built. The native of Columbus, Ohio. Went to high school at Upper Arlington High School. The Upper Arlington Golden Bears. A lot of people think that they got their nickname from Jack Nicholas going to school there. Actually, it was the reverse of that. They were the Golden Bears long before Jack Nicholas ever showed up. So Upper Arlington High School. Good bit of trivia right there. And of course he would star collegiately. Only about uh, a mile and a half down the road from Upper Arlington at Ohio State University. It's a pretty big league operation at Ohio State when you have the track named after Jesse Owens, the golf center named after Jack Nicholas, and the football practice complex named after Woody Hayes. That's not too shabby. Indeed. It's in the air to left field, and Duval makes a catch. One out. Panics had a good game today, though. A couple of hits, run scored, two runs batted in. Brandon Belt is 0 for 2, walked and scored in the three run second inning. Rice working on his second inning out of the Reds' bullpen. If you weren't with us, Tim Adelman. 
had to leave the game after one inning. We've not received any update from the Reds clubhouse as to his physical condition. What exactly was wrong? There was something wrong. Well, now we learn he has some tightness in his neck. That's something that I suffered most of the time after games. <laughs> Brandon Belt. There's a drive into deep right field, and Belt is homing for the third time in this series. series began Brandon Belt had four home runs well, he drops the bat hat on that 92 mile an hour fastball low and in boy what a classic wheelhouse spot that is we documented that you know Belt has been among the best offensive players against the Reds in all the baseball since he came into the major leagues. And then the Reds totally shut him down last weekend, or last week. In a three-game sweep, Belt went 0 for 11. But my, oh, my, oh, that has changed over the four games in this series. Well, he was off to such a miserable start this year. Batting average down around 220 or below. Had not hit very many home runs, was not being much of a run producer. And now Posey a base hit. Mac Jenkins will come out to talk. Maybe, maybe to buy a little time for Blake Wood, who's warming up down the bullpen. We had also the left-hander, Wandy Peralta, but he has since put his jacket back on, so it's Wood only now. Yeah, this is starting to become the kind of game where even with the day off tomorrow, you don't figure to see Wandy Peralta. He's become, right along with Lorenzen and, and Iglesias, one of the three relievers down there that, by and large, unless you go through an extended period of time where you're just not getting any work, that you're saving those guys for tight games. Two away in the inning. I just got to thinking, Jim, uh, I had not heard anything recently about the progress of Tony Singrani. We heard a little bit about it on the last homestand. you have any update on that? He's had a little bit of a setback. They brought him on the road trip. They were hoping that he would throw one bullpen session here in San Francisco and then be ready to go with that oblique. I want to call it pain, just a little um, 
Tug irritation pull, yeah. yeah in there so they've actually uh, stopped him from throwing they don't think it's a major setback but they've just pushed him back a little bit so at the moment he is not throwing it is just mind-boggling the number of pitchers whether they be starters or relievers on this Reds team that just have been injured I can't remember who the pitcher was. I just read about the other day. Oh, Brandon McCarthy. He misses a start because he tweaked something in the weight room. <laughs> and I know I'm basically putting the ball on a tee for you when I bring up something like that, but I thought to myself, it's in his left shoulder. He's a right-handed pitcher. summary right from the get-go the Giants they get four runs three hits a couple of Reds airs in the opening inning against Adelman who left with some stiffness in his neck but the hits just kept on coming Brandon Crawford a two-run double in a three-run second inning to open a seven to nothing lead Scooter Jeanette got the Reds on the board with a two-run single to right center in the fifth, Reds pulled to within five up until the solo home run by Brandon Belt in the just-completed sixth inning, and you're up to speed. Giants in front, Still Jeff Samarja, he is nine outs away from getting his first win of his 2017 season. And here we are, well over a, a month and a couple of weeks into this 2017 year. Today, Samarja's eighth start, 0-5, the record coming into the game today. That ball stung. Now, there is the first time in a long time we've seen Peraza really drive a ball. And this is easily a three-base hit the way he runs. That's nice to see from Jose Peraza. It sure is because it's the kind of thing that you, it reinforces what the Reds have seen from Peraza in spurts. And you expect to see him do that more and more. Stayed back on that ball. Still did, did a lot of with just with his hands, but got it right on the meat of the bat, split the seam between right field and center field, and rolled all the way out there for an easy triple. Now 
Fastball inside. Patrick Kimlahan comes up to bat. He's batting for Austin Bryce. Bryce goes two innings, allows three hits and a run. Struck out a batter, did not walk a batter. So Adelman, Aston, Bryce. Combining so far for six innings. In the throw made to first. Kimlahan retired, one out. Tucker Barnhart. Tucker, a pinch hit double to left center field and scored in the fifth inning. So now he'll settle in for the second time. Stayed in the game to replace Mezzarocco, and this ball is lifted into right center field and caught. Runner tags and scores to make it an 8-3 game. Pretty nice day off the bench for Tucker Barnock. Sure is. Now Billy Hamilton with the bases empty and two outs in the inning. Giants get their bullpen started for the first time. You figure some margin gets through seven. He's about to throw his 110th pitch of the game. Breaking ball misses. Contos, a right-hander. Okert, the left-hander in the giant pen. Knocked down by Belt, and no chance Samarja wins that race. He made it close, and he's a really good athlete. He might be the only starting pitcher in the major leagues that can even make it that close. Former standout wide receiver at Notre Dame, as we brought up earlier. Uh, Billy, all, ha all he has to do is run and run hard down the line. Samarja has to catch the ball and tag the bag at the same time. He does it with kind of a hop, skip, leap. At the very end, as that ball gets away from the first baseman belt. And his day is over. Bruce Bochy coming to get him. This will be our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. They'll bring in the left-hander to face Studer Jeanette. And the crowd applauding Samarja, who could be, could be, on his way to his first win.
pitching himself a whale of a game today. Comes out in the bottom of the or the top of the seventh inning. Scooter Jeanette will take over and at the plate and face Steve Oker, left-hander that we've seen a couple of times in this series already. For Oker, 15th time he's been out there for the Giants this year. He appeared in 16 games last year. Samarja allows nine hits in his six and a third innings. So far charged with three runs, and of course, Hamilton belongs to him over at first base. Punched out eight. And Chris brought up before the game ever started, Samarja just had very good control this year. He did not walk a single batter in 52 innings. He's walked only 10. It's not bad. Yeah, you know, we mentioned, Tom, early on that all the peripheral numbers surrounding Jeff Samarja were really good, and they really defy the fact that he came into this ballgame 0-5. So a lot of contributing factors there, bad defense, not much run support. Well, he's had both today, good defense and a lot of run support. Two, two to Jeanette. <laughs> what are we talking about? Run support so far this year, and then Samarja hit the lottery today. Two, two again. Straight up in the air. Although these are never for sure. Span now finds it, and that's that. Reds get a run. The trail 8 3 as they stand and stretch. Twenty seventeen AT and T Park in San Francisco. I'm Jim Day. Happy Mother's Day once again, and we've been uh, finding out from players what's the favorite mom cooked meal. Let's hear some more. She does really good. Just in the old steak, steak and mashed potatoes. Good, really good red beans and rice. She's got some, got some, grew up with some good food. Chicken casserole. Ooh. My mom used to cook it all the time. It was amazing. Oh, I haven't had it in years. This chicken she makes with uh, cheese and sour cream in it. It's pretty good. Anything my mom cooks is outstanding. <laughs> Everything is good. Another politically correct answer from 
Homer Bailey, who's on the mend. We've talked to so many moms when players make their major league debut, and it's such a long road from taking them to practice when they were growing up all the way through the minor leagues, all the way to the major leagues. And we salute, salute all the moms out there because, as you said earlier, Tom, it is an all day, every day job, and they are the backbone of humankind. There is no debate about that one, Jim Day. That's cool stuff. A lot of the things that uh, Jim Day and our Fox Sports Ohio crew were working on during spring training to let you get to know some of these players, let all of us help to get to know some of these players a little bit better. All right, Blake Wood takes over, bottom of the seventh inning, eight to three. Giants in front. Two and one on Eduardo Nunez. Wood threw the ball as well as we have ever seen him throw the ball in that extra inning game, 17 inning game here on Friday night. Two perfect innings, two strikeouts, did not walk a batter. He just completely dominated the six batters he faced in that game. Only one ball left the infield. And he'll take care of Nunez to start this seventh inning. Well, anytime you have a 2 2 game that goes 17 innings, you get a lot of good relief pitching. He was just part of it. But Blake Wood, yeah, you're right about that. I mean, he did not have really about much out of the strike zone at all. When he gets his stuff over, it is really hard to hit. Batting average last year overall was right around 260. This year it's closer to 230. Strikes out about a batter an inning. Peraza to the glove side will throw out Ruggiano. Two away and the Giants will let Okert go ahead and bat with two down and nobody on here in the seventh. So he got the final out in relief of Samarja in the top of his seventh inning, getting Scooter Jeanette. One and two on Oka. It's only his second career at bat. He struck out in his first. 
Well, the Reds have an off day tomorrow before they tee him up with the Cubs starting Tuesday night, and airstrike three called. A 1-2-3 inning for Blake Wood. End of seven. Giants lead 8-3. Eight three ball game as the Reds come to bat here in the top half of the eighth inning. Gorky's Hernandez takes over in left field. The day is over for Eduardo Nunez. Nunez made a big play in this game defensively, and there's no telling what may have happened. Were it not for his diving catch all the way back into third inning, Giants at the time, I mean, yeah, they had a 7-0 lead, but the Reds had two on, and... Duvall hit a liner in the left field, and Nunez racing to his right, a diving catch. That ball gets by him, two runs scoring. You never know. Okert is in there to face Votto to start the inning. Maybe we see a change after the first batter. As Contos is ready in the bullpen. Ball hit hard down the left field line. And there's another nice play by a giant left fielder. He, of course, just came in the game. Yeah. Makes, makes the manager look pretty smart when that happens, doesn't it? Bruce Bochy just took out Nunez, who was a converted infielder, left in the ball game for his bat, or left in the lineup for his bat, and he replaces him with the defensive specialist, Gorky's Hernandez, who makes a nice play. Boy, even Votto's outs are hard to come by. He had a shot to the first baseman, as you said earlier, Tom. Turned into a double play. That ball slicing away from a left fielder. Takes a sliding catch to be able to retire him. Now Adam Duvall will be our centerpiece today for our AARP's Getting to Know You. The 
Remember, it was Adam Duvall who was traded as a part of the package for Mike Leak. His first career hit was a home run in his first game in this ballpark off of Mike Leak of the Reds. He also hit a home run his first career game with the Reds. And it was also his first at bat with the Reds. That was a pinch hit home run in the final day of August 2015 against the Cubbies. Now he was hoping, I'm sure, that his homecoming back to San Francisco would be a little bit more productive from his offensive standpoint. 0 for 3 today. I think he's like 1 for 12 in this series. He took an 0 for 5 in that 17 inning game with a couple of walks. He did have a hit yesterday. But it's been a rough this part of the road trip anyway for Duvall and the guy in the on deck circle now and Eugenio Suarez. Mm -hmm. Neither one is knocked in a run. And these guys for for a while there were carrying the offense. Yeah, Suarez has three hits on the trip and Duvall has two and neither one has knocked in a run. We are in the eighth inning, none on, one out. Well, they got Contos up and ready. He is ready. Thinking maybe after retiring the left-handed batter, they just bring him in the game. Two and two on Duvall. center field and right between the defenders I got it you take it Ruggiano went after that ball like he was going to have it the entire way and I guess he felt like Span was going to take it Span went behind to kind of back it up Ruggiano just joined the team last week I was going to say they didn't communicate before the play and they didn't communicate after the play. And that's all for Oker. Contos will come on to face Suarez when we return.
on the Chicago Cubs from Wrigley Field. Reds Live gets underway 7.30 Eastern Time on your home for Reds Baseball, Fox Sports, Ohio. Brewers rally with five in the eighth to win today. Cardinals again beat Chicago. Cubs a game under 500. And they will be off tomorrow as well. Reds will open that series with Bronson Arroyo on the mound Tuesday night. Jim Day will be calling the play-by-play -play action on Tuesday night. He'll be ready to roll on Tuesday. And Contos, meanwhile, takes over on the mound for the Giants. Runner at second, one out. Kind of interesting the way Bruce Bochy manages. He reminds me a little bit of Tony La Russa. That, that managers like that, they, they want to stop a, a rally before it even begins. I mean, this game looked like it was out of reach a long time ago. And you're wondering, why are you making all these pitching changes here when you've got a five-run lead? I mean, it would take an incredible rally for the Reds to get back in it. Well, the Giants' bullpen is not all that healthy. They've had some issues. And he just tries to play the percentages right now so that it doesn't begin to look like an inning that may indeed get out of hand. They fan Suarez for the second out here in the eighth. I think that off day is going to come at a perfect time for Duvall and Suarez. Those guys pretty much, along with Joey Votto, have been playing every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, those three especially have been grinding it out through a lot of long games. Reds played a lot of lengthy games on that homestand. Duvall's only missed one game the whole year. Votto hasn't missed any. Suarez has missed one. Straight away center field. Room out there for Span, and that's all for the Reds in the eighth. Contos retires two in a row.
Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Coming up Saturday, Reds will be back on the home front taking on the Colorado Rockies. You can be there for as low as $12. And on that night, the first 20,000 fans in attendance get an Adam Duvall bobblehead. Thanks to St. Elizabeth Healthcare for tickets, visit Reds.com. Rysele Glacius got the save in the first game of this series Thursday night. And he'll come in to get a little work in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, he's a man awfully good this year. The only run that he has given up is a solo home run that he gave up against the Brewers back in the 15th of April. Hernan Perez took him deep. Other than that, nothing but goose eggs. Reds when they return home after the three games in Chicago. Play 7-10 Friday night, the 19th. They'll play a 4-10 game on the 20th. That's a Saturday. And then 1-10 on Sunday. And back-to-back -back night games against Cleveland at Great American Ballpark. Before then going to Cleveland for two in a row. Strike three called to Span. And Iglesias a strikeout, the first batter he faces. Oh, a little backdoor breaking ball right here. I mean, he just says Span completely given up on this pitch. And the only way you get to that outside corner is you really finish your breaking ball there. If you kind of slow your arm down or you don't bend at the very end, it just never quite comes around enough to hit the corner. I can't help think that yeah, you know, I'm watching Bruce Bochy down there and he's watching Rysel Iglesias. And he's probably thinking, man, we really could use this guy in our bullpen. Well, every time I see Iglesias, I can't help but think every time he takes him out. And look, for the job they're asking him to do now, he's been really good at it. And he's getting better and better every time out, but I can't help thinking about how good he looked in your rotation. I mean, because his off-speed stuff is such that he can he can get by with just that. I think he's got a little better fastball when he pitches out of the pen because you can be more aggressive physically that way. But you're right, because he's got command of all of his pitches. I just find it so ironic that, you know, the two pitchers at the red sign out of Cuba, you know, both defect, they sign, they get to the major leagues so quickly. Their stuff is so good in different ways. But, I mean, Iglesias has a chance to be one of those guys that, while not throwing 100-and-something miles an hour, he's still a guy that's going to be almost impossible to hit, mm -hmm. like Chapman. And yet you have the game plan for both of them when they came to your organization to both be starting pitchers. And it's going to turn out that neither one will be and you wonder if the decision around Iglesias to be in the bullpen at least now has as much to do with you know keeping him strong physically yes as it does evaluating his stuff and deciding whether he's better in a pen or as a starter oh I don't think I don't think there's any debate about that you're, you're precisely I mean, you, correct you, you, you got to do something to try to keep your guys healthy and there hasn't been a major league baseball team out there yet that has figured out how to keep starting pitchers healthy until after they've already gone under the knife.
Coming up today and after every game on Fox Sports Ohio, we'll break it all down for you. Reds Live, brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. All the gang hanging around back in our studios in Cincinnati, approaching 7 p.m. Eastern time. Reds are down 8-3. Three outs away from losing three straight games after winning the opener. Iglesias, a perfect ninth inning. by Ray St. Clair Group. You get the first look at the lineups, features, interviews, and more here on Fox Sports Ohio. Tuesday night, boys will be in the studio in Cincinnati. We'll be emanating from Wrigley Field in Chicago. And here are your probables. Arroyo versus Lackey on Tuesday night. Feldman versus Hendricks on Wednesday. And right now, facing Lester on Thursday is Luis Alberto Bonilla. He's penciled in there. But Brian Price did say before today's game, that Amir Garrett will return possibly in the Cubs series most certainly when they get home over the weekend so that is up in the air but he will be back sooner than later and it could be could be see what happens on that Thursday moving Bonilla back. All righty looking forward to that series. Jim Day, you'll be ready for all the action on that one on Tuesday night. Am I right or wrong? I will, and I will, uh, on the off day in Chicago, we'll probably have to get Chris Welsh a masseuse since he uh, will be straining his back carrying me on Tuesday Right, night. his nickname is now Samsonite. That's right. <laughs> you'll be spending tomorrow boning up and do a little prep work for your Tuesday play-by-play -play game. Exactly right. There's a base hit into the right center field by Peraza. The second hit today. Well, I will miss you boys. I look forward to being right back with you on Wednesday night. Stuart Turner will come up and bat. The new Giants pitcher is right-hander Corey Guerin. Samarja went six and a third. Okert two-thirds, Contos two-thirds. <laughs> Actually, Samarja went six and two-thirds in this game. Oker got the final out in that seventh. Arroyo, and they turn it over.
That's a really quick turn right there by the Giants as they go all the way around the horn to get the double play. So the Reds are down to their final out. And it's in there a strike. It's a disappointing series. And really uh, on the heels of that Friday night game, Reds had a number of chances in the earlier part of the game. Not much at all. They went a long stretch in that 17 inning game without even a single hit. But they had the best chances of either team as far as base runners as that game started to get later in the game. And they were unable to push across the run. And ever since then, it's been all Giants. Two run win here yesterday, and they jumped all over the Reds today. This will do it. 8 3 in the final. We'll be back with more right after this.